I'm Paul Ramsey and today we're talking about how to use a Chevrolet's pendulum to test for hypnotic suggestibility with a volunteer. In order to do this, you're going to need two items, an actual Chevrolet's pendulum and you'll also need a target sheet that we talked about how to construct in an earlier video. Uh, if you have those two items, you're pretty much set to go, so let's talk about the actual process. So you put your target on a nice flat surface and toward the edge of that surface so that your volunteer can come right up to it, actually stand up tight against it and look over down onto the target some. Have them grasp the pendulum with a good 9-10 inches of length to it so that it will swing really freely and then have them hold that pendulum and let it get centered right above the intersection. And this is where having the acrylic pendulums is pretty nice, I think, is that when you get that centered over the target, you can actually look down through the acrylic and see how the intersection actually shows through the acrylic. That helps them have a focal point. They know that they're getting it centered. Uh, just about an inch between the bottom of the pendulum and the actual surface of the target is good. And this is important, have them be as still and calm as they can be when they stare down that length of the chain, right down, focused on the intersection. Now, you need to watch and make sure that they're really making a genuine effort to be still. Uh, some people will want to please you too much and they'll really, it will be obvious that they're they're moving things around, okay? And obviously that's not good for you to work with them. And also, some of them will be kind of nervous. And so if they're a little shaky, it's gonna make it very hard for things to work, all right? So you really wanna try to get them to relax and just focus on that intersection of the two lines and let them be as still as they can be. Once you see that they have done that, then you wanna give them their first idea to focus on. I start with yes. And I try to create a connection between the idea of yes and the natural north-south movement of this axis. Just like shaking your head up and down is yes, I try to get them to capture that feeling in their mind. I talk to them in case they're more of an audio processor about the idea of hearing yes in their mind, of actually hearing their own voice or the voice of someone they know saying yes in their mind over and over again. For people who are more kinesthetic in nature, uh, I talk about what it feels like to shake your head yes and no, to feel confident, to actually feel a yes response in your body. And for people who are visual, I talk about seeing themselves in their mind, shaking their head yes, or just seeing anyone that they recognize in their mind, what it's like to see someone shake their head yes, covering all the different ways that there is of getting someone to process the idea of yes in their mind and getting them to focus on that and focus on that until finally, when they do it well and they capture that feeling of yes, that pendulum should start to swing. Now again, you really wanna make sure that the arm, the wrist, the hand, the entire body stays really still, but yet these tiny little muscular movements that happen subconsciously should transfer energy down the chain and swing that pendulum. Once they do that and they've shown you and themselves that they can produce idiomotor response, that's fantastic, let's build on it a little bit. Have them stop the exercise, recenter the pendulum over the intersection again, and now go with that contrary idea, the idea of no. Focus on, again, all the normal senses that we use to process. What it's like to feel no in your mind and in your body. What it's like to hear someone very firmly saying no. What it's like to see someone shaking their head no processing through all those different ways of thinking about the negative concept of no and getting them to really think about that and think about that until finally they start to get those small, tiny muscular movements that they're not even consciously aware of, swinging that pendulum, producing that no response as that pendulum swings along the horizontal axis. Once they've done that, identify it, congratulate them, this is great, and have them stop the exercise again. Now one other thing that's helpful is to see if you can get an I don't know or an I'm not sure response. So have them center the pendulum again and walk through, talk through the whole process again, this time really trying to capture the essence 
of what it's like to be confused or unsure, what it's like to think I don't know or I'm not sure inside your mind. To hear that statement in your mind, to feel it, to see it, all of those different things. And then if they do that well, you should get this spinning motion, this rotation, which is really a pull and push between yes and no. And so they get this spinning motion and that's I don't know or I'm not sure. All right. So now you've created a yes response, a no response, and an I'm not sure response. <laughs> that's a little bit exaggerated, but you get what I mean. Now let's talk about a few things you need to keep in mind when you practice this with volunteers. First of all, you need to really make sure that they're not trying too hard to please you. I mentioned that before, but I really want to reiterate it again. Keep an eye on what they're doing all over their body, not just where the pendulum is relative to the target. If you see them really kind of swaying with the upper body or maybe generating a little motion from the hips or the legs, all right, they could be trying to please you because they want to be helpful, they don't want to disappoint you, anything like that. So, you know, they're not trying to sabotage the session or the exercise, but they may be trying too hard to please you. And if you see that, just, you know, nicely talk to them about steadying their body, trusting that they'll do what they need to do and not trying so hard to produce the result. Okay, that's one thing to think about. Also, you want to think about what if there's a contrary movement to the movement that you define. Let's say that you define the yes movement as having that pendulum move north-south along the vertical axis. But when you practice it with them and they're thinking about yes in their mind, the pendulum actually moves along the horizontal axis. What do you do? It's a negative contrary movement. It means there's some kind of resistance coming from the volunteer. Could be conscious, could be subconscious or unconscious. You don't know for sure. It's easy to think that it's a failure of the exercise. There's no failure. Everything that your volunteer does with you is going to tell you something that you want to know. It's good to know that there's resistance going on. Now you can approach it and do something about it. So, if the volunteer has a negative or contrary movement to what you defined, you want to just gently and calmly bring that up and give them the opportunity to voice any nervousness, anxiety, uh, skepticism. There can be any number of different things that people have going on in their deeper mind level. It might be at the conscious level even. They may be aware of it or they may not be aware of it. But working it out with them is going to help you be able to move forward with them. All right, you need to be able to conquer that resistance. So keep an eye on that as well.